Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Nigel and in today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of a desk tour and I'm also going to be showing you a really cool monitor by BenQ. Now, I feel like some of you might be kind of confused or a little bit disappointed with some of the stuff that I'm going to show you on my desk. Some of it's kind of spendy and some of it's really cheap and not really that good. So you're probably wondering why I'm even using it. Uh, I still, I feel like Every single time I think about doing like a desk tour video, I feel like I'm gonna wait until I can save up money to get something better to show you. So I just kind of decided that, you know what, I might as well just show you what I'm using now and maybe I'll do an updated desk tour later. But yeah, I'm gonna kind of go through some of the components of my editing setup and the things that I keep on my desk, just to kind of show you what my workflow looks like when it comes to editing. So first, let's start off with the computer. I have a 2014 maxed out MacBook Pro and it's got a 512 gigabyte SSD, I believe, with 16 gigs of RAM and an NVIDIA graphics card with two gigs of dedicated media, whatever generation i7 was out in 2014. So yeah, it's a pretty old machine, definitely nothing that impressive, but it's been working for me ever since I got it. So I really haven't had a reason to upgrade my computer, but I mean, it's been working and I guess it hasn't been working. When it comes to editing 4K stuff, it can be kind of sluggish. So eventually I'm probably gonna have to get a new video editing machine, but I've been using this one since 2014 and it's definitely been working just fine for all my 1080p stuff. So, so yeah, this is what I have been editing all of my videos on and I have it just tucked away under this little monitor stand. Now I'm gonna get to the monitor in a second, but first let's go through some of the other just random little things that I have on my desk. So I have a really beat up corded keyboard that I actually found on the sidewalk, which was kind of funny. I found it on the sidewalk, someone was throwing it away and I picked it up and I've been using it ever since. It works just fine. <laughs> so I have this really cheap wireless mouse. It's kind of like a poor man's magic mouse, I guess, but it actually has a left and a right click, which I'm, you know, pretty used to because I came from a PC. So super cheap. It was like 20 bucks or something like that on Amazon. Now this really cool mouse pad that my wife got for me. It's a uh, all leather and it's got my initials on it. And then as far as connections, I have this USB hub with four extra USBs and it's a USB 3.0. So it's relatively fast for storage. I have a hard drive that I work off of. This is a lacy rugged two terabyte hard drive, I believe, and it connects via Thunderbolt, which this 2014 MacBook Pro has two Thunderbolt ports, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's where I store a lot of my projects and I can actually work off that drive too because it's actually pretty fast. Now, as far as speakers, these are not gonna impress anybody, but these are really cheap edifier speakers that work off of USB. I've been meaning to get like some, you know, legit studio monitor speakers, but I just haven't really, I've always prioritized buying other stuff over buying speakers. Um, I have headphones that I use when I, you know, need to make sure that my audio is sounding the way it really needs to sound. But just for listening to music and for editing YouTube videos, these little edifier speakers have been working just fine. They are very bassy. So I use this EQ program for Max. It's called EQ Mac. And what I do is I just turn the low end, which is usually associated with like the bassiness. I turn that kind of down so it gives me more of a flat sound instead of a really bassy sound because that's just something that these speakers are kind of notorious for. They sound, you know, pretty good, but they're just very bassy, which is not what you want when you're editing sound. You want it to be a nice flat sound. So eventually I'm going to upgrade these and I'm sure a lot of the audio professionals are cringing at the fact that I use those, but that's what I've been using for the longest time. And again, I use headphones when I need to, but you know, those ones, they work just fine for me. <laughs> yeah, let's get into talking about the monitor. And as a lot of you know, I do like to keep the products that I talk about on this channel to be more of like the budget-friendly products, but this one is definitely not budget-friendly. In fact, this one is actually pretty expensive. And it was actually sent to me by BenQ, and you know they were nice enough to hit me up and ask if I wanted to test out and review this 27-inch photographer's monitor. Now what's kind of cool about this monitor is that it comes pre-calibrated. It's a very color accurate monitor. So let's just get into talking about this a little bit because it's actually really cool. So before I really get into everything and tell you why this is so cool, I should probably tell you the price of this monitor. Again, this is not an inexpensive monitor. This one is about $800. But again, this is a very specific piece of gear that if you're a professional photographer or especially a colorist, this is the monitor 
that you want. And what I do want to say is that BenQ does have a more affordable version of this monitor. Basically, it's a $300 version. It's still a 27 inch, but it just doesn't have all the bells and whistles that this monitor does. So just keep that in mind. BenQ does have some more affordable options as far as like editing monitors, but this one is like their most premium monitor. And it's basically the monitor that you would want if you're a colorist or a photographer, or maybe you do retouching for photos or something like that. This is a very color accurate monitor. So yeah, this is the BenQ SW27OC. So again, this is a 27 inch monitor. They kind of brand it as their photographer's monitor. But for us, I would say this is their colorist's monitor. And that's one thing that I've definitely struggled with in my color grading and video editing life is when I color grade something on like my MacBooks, you know, screen, it'll look great. And then I'll watch it on someone else's phone or someone else's TV and it looks just so much worse than how it looked on my MacBook. And that's because my MacBook screen wasn't calibrated to give me a very neutral starting point. A lot of computer monitors are a little bit too saturated or their, their color temperature leans a little bit more to the blue or to the yellow side. This monitor comes pre-calibrated to give you accurate colors when you're editing. Now, there are a lot of things that come into play about whether or not you're seeing accurate colors. You still need to make sure that even monitors like this are you know, calibrated with an actual calibrating tool. And what's cool about this monitor, it actually comes with a shade to go over the monitor so that ambient light sources around you are not going to affect how you're seeing the monitor. So you're not going to think that you have your color dialed in your edit when really it's not going to look like that because you have some, you know, really weird ambient lights going on around in your office. But it makes it a lot easier having a monitor that's designed to be as color accurate as possible. So some other things that I really love about this monitor are just the connection options. This can connect via HDMI, obviously, but I actually have it connected to my MacBook via a mini display port, which my MacBook Pro, again, has two of. So I have this connected right to my MacBook Pro via mini display port, and you can also do HDMI, and there's also some USB ports. So it's got a lot of different options. And one other thing that I really like about this monitor is that you can actually adjust the height and you can flip it to vertical if you wanted to, which is also really cool. And I know that a lot of photographers use it in that way when they're editing their portrait style photos. So it has a bunch of different color modes like Adobe RGB, sRGB, Rec 709 that are all pre-built into this monitor. So you can just kind of scroll through and see which one you want. I usually use Rec 709 whenever I'm editing because that's a color space that I work with a lot when I'm editing videos. So that's what I normally use. But again, you can you know tweak that to your liking and unfortunately Unfortunately, this doesn't come with a calibration puck, which I kind of wish that it did. I'll be honest, if I was paying 800 bucks for this monitor, I would kind of wish that it would come with a calibration puck, but it does come with a control puck that you can put on to the base of your monitor stand and you can use that to adjust settings if you don't want to use the little you know buttons on the front of the monitor so that's kind of nice that they include that but yeah if you did want to get this fully calibrated for the space that you're in you will have to buy an external calibration puck if you want to do that so yeah that was a quick tour of my desk and my little editing space Everything that I have is probably going to change in the next coming months, but this is what I'm using currently and it's been working out totally fine for me. So yeah, that was my quick look at my editing desk and the BenQ SW27OC. I definitely really like this monitor. And if you're in the market for a beast of a video editing monitor, this is definitely be the one that I would suggest. And again, BenQ does have some cheaper options, which I'll also link in the description below, but I'll definitely link this SW27OC in the description so you can check it out a little bit more in detail. I've definitely really enjoyed editing with a monitor like this, how big it is and how great the colors look. I feel like it's really upped my color grading knowledge because I've actually been able to see what it's actually supposed to look like on a properly calibrated monitor as opposed to just hoping that it looks good when I'm editing off of my MacBook screen. So really like that monitor. Big thanks to BenQ for sending it out to me. It's been a pleasure being able to use it and uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have all the little things that I talked about linked in the description as well if you want to check those out. But yeah, really appreciate you watching my videos. Thanks for stopping by and I will catch you all next time. Later.